Hello, and welcome to another edition of Long Beach Treasure. I'm your host, Harvey Keller. Today, I'm really pleased to be able to introduce you to Stan Pulowski, uh, a sculptor, an artist, a collector, and an all-around good guy. And I believe, Stan, you're also a Long Beach native. Yes, I am. I was born in Long Beach many years ago, and uh, I've lived here most of my life. I uh, went away for a short while and lived in Hawaii uh, for, for back and forth for several years. But uh, rough I just life. Yeah. <laughs> I always end up right here down in Long Beach, uh, along the ocean. I can't seem to get away from the beach. Just really like it. Now, behind us, there are a lot of uh, collectibles here of uh, Disney memorabilia. Do you? Or did you, uh, were you associated with uh, Disney in any way? Yes, I was associated with Disney. Years ago, I did Mickey's 50th birthday sculpture for the Bowers Museum, and I did uh, several editions of, uh, limited editions of sterling silver sculptures and some uh, cold cast porcelain uh, figures for them uh, back in the early 90s. Now, are these uh, original? The pieces that I have that are behind us are cartoon character memorabilia going, some of it going back to the turn of the century, be actually before Mickey, the Popeyes and Betty Boops and uh, Rose O'Neill Cupies, but a lot of this is Disney uh, three-dimensional objects that I preferred to collect because uh, being a sculptor myself uh, were made back in the 40s and through the 50s. Uh, there's also some of the toys here, like the projector that was made in the 30s. Uh, the books were printed in the 30s, so. Uh, wow. But I think you're best known for your Snoopy characters, am I correct? Well, I'm, uh, in the last uh, 12 years or so, I've done a lot of uh, Snoopy characters. I, I did the large bronze for the city of Santa Rosa. I Let's walk over here okay. and look at some of them. All right. You mentioned the Bauer Museum. Is that the one in Santa Ana? Yes, it is. You know, I had never heard of the Bauer Museum until I did a tour at the Rancho the other day for docents from the Bauer, and now in the last two days, I've heard of it four times. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these, tell me about these. Well. This, this particular piece right here is the Cartoonist Award, and uh, it's named after Charles Schulz, and it's presented to cartoonists and uh, animators who have done lifetime achievement uh, for their characters and um, is, other different awards. Is that you like receiving the award from Actually, Charles? Actually, that, that's a picture of me and Charles Schulz together after he received the Sparky Award. I was at the very first ceremony, and I attended several of the ceremonies thereafter. Um, the piece next to it here is the uh, retired bronze, which I did as a limited edition. This was originally planned to be for Charles Schulz's uh, 50th year sculpture, which I have always ended up doing quite a few different sculptures for Disney and other places for the 50th year. And when he took ill and decided to retire, we renamed it and issued it as a limited edition piece. Um, I was very fortunate before it was discovered that he was ill, I had asked him to sign the piece. So he actually, there's a picture of him here where he's actually carving his name into the back of the original piece so that when we molded it, it shows up inside of the bronze. So this is actually his signature here. I also had done 12 of the different characters. It's really hard to see uh, intricately. How do you do such small, intricate details in, in well, your sculpture? Well, well, well I, I was actually a, trained as a jeweler more so. I, I have a lot of jewelry in, in my background. I used to do a lot of manufacturing for Van Cleef and Arpels, so I always did very intricate stuff, and I more or less kind of evolved this into my sculpture, doing really, really high detail work. It took me, though, four months to actually carve just the rug on the master model for this piece with the 12 different characters in it. Before we move over to look at the other uh, statues of there, um, let me point some of these out. These are some of the original cartoon cells? Yes, these are original animation drawings and cells. Uh, some of the stuff here is with the Mickey there in the middle on the broom. That's, I believe, from Barnyard Symphony uh, area, or uh, era, I should say. And uh, I believe that's about when he first came out, about 1929. Uh, now, to simplify it, if they uh, wanted to move this, they would have several of those, and they're sort of like yeah. flipping the paper. E exactly. It, it, they would actually shoot it separately, though, and that's what it is. One frame uh, uh, per uh, 
not per second, a lot of them would be 32 frames per second or more, depending on the studio, but you get the basic same thing as the film is run then through the projector to give the movement. And these would be shot against a background, which a lot of times there would be hundreds of cells set against one single background. So in collecting these, you want to not only find the cells, you want to find it with the background piece behind it that's the matching background for that scene. This really isn't a showroom, it's a museum, isn't it? Originally, years ago, this was a showroom, and now it's the shipping area and museum for people that come there's a lot of people that will come here worldwide we have a lot of people visit here from Hong Kong and Japan that come here and they just love to come here and spend quite a lot of time in just this room I see some other bronze sculptures of uh, Schultz's characters here these are all yours these are the five new designs that I've just recently finished which are the scuba diver the astronaut the patriot the magician pulling Woodstock out of a hat with bunny ears and of course the well-known flying ace uh, Snoopy holding onto the propeller. Uh, this is a limited edition. We're doing a very small edition of these that is just coming out, and I'm just trying to gear up for this Christmas to get enough of these done so that we don't sell out right before then. So. You know, again, I just can't believe the, the minute detail you're yeah. able to get on I'm your sculptures. Um, Craig Schulz, Charles Schulz's son, really liked this one in particular, and the reason he liked it so well was that you could see actually the screws on the actual little flintlock and actually on the trigger guard, and most people, even though they may never even notice it or turn the sculpture over, I actually put the screws on the end of the rifle like it, it would be there for the butt plate, and in addition, if you look at the buttons, you'll actually see there's actually holes where the thread would be going through. What are these small little sculptures? This was a, an addition I did many years ago. It was a limited edition of sterling silver, uh, sculptures. Uh, we sold those as sets with etched glass scenes behind them. Uh, Charles Schulz really enjoyed these a great deal and if you ever get a chance and other people out there in the audience might be interested in going up to the Charles M. Schulz Museum which is up where he lived for the last 40 some years in Santa Rosa. He, they actually took his office out of his studio the way it was and moved it over there, including the paneling, the drapes, and everything. Mm. And since he really enjoyed these sculptures, he had these in his bookcase and on his desk. You'll actually see that he kept these set in his office. So I was really thrilled when he wrote me years ago and said that he really liked these that well. Now, how, how do you market your products? I'm not very good at marketing. I, I, I uh, we actually have uh, a collector's club that actually does a lot of the, I say, advertising for me in a way because they're always writing articles about me and inquiring with me and then taking pictures and putting it up on their website. I'm not a very good marketer. I'm more the artist type, even though I try to be a businessman. Uh, and then, uh, I, again, the, the Japanese and the uh, people from China have been over here and uh, I've had different groups that will purchase them and market them through their catalogs. So I've really been kind of fortunate because I've never really went and pursued it the way I really should. Mm -hmm. uh, locally, we've had, or here domestically in the United States, I've had several different places out of Colorado write up special little booklets and stuff and send them out, but this is all kind of fallen into my lap. <laughs> so the um, Behind you, uh, is this a um, wax sculpture of the that you do before you do the bronze sculpture? Well, well, exactly. Well, normally I do a wax sculpture, but this is actually foam with steel armature and then clay applied over it. By but the way, this was commissioned by the city of Santa Rosa? This is the original for the one that was commissioned for the one for the city of Santa Rosa, which is in Depot Park Railroad Square. Uh, and I also created a special railing uh, with that's an octagon that has eight different bronze scenes showing different characters and different scenes that were very famous done by Schulz. One that most people don't realize that uh, Schulz had actually coined the phrase security blanket. So I had to have Linus there holding on to the security blanket and uh, several other things, of course, the flying ace, which was really popular in the 60s, still popular to this day, but really became very famous uh, in the 60s. Uh, Did you say Schultz's nickname was Sparky? Yeah, correct. It, by his friends, uh, he would sign things Sparky, and he pr liked to be called Sparky. He was nicknamed that as a youngster by, I believe, his uncle, and it just stuck. And so all through the years, uh, when he would write letters to his friends and sign books, he would write Sparky on it. 
Over here, I actually have an original uh, Sunday strip that he gave me uh, saying to Stan with friendship, Sparky. It's one of my favorites because it is the Flying Ace, which is one of my favorite characters or personas by Snoopy. And, now, uh, when you do a sculpture, do you make a sketch and then do you uh, do a wax mock-up and then the casting? Well, most cases I don't create the drawing, but for this particular large one, I did create drawings so that I could get all kinds of different angles. And this large one here is actually made into sections. The head lifts off, the head comes off of Snoopy, and the bottom comes off. And it had to be made into several different pieces because it was going to be so heavy. I believe that we estimated the head was going to weigh about six or 700 pounds alone just for Charlie Brown. Now, is this the actual size? This is the actual size. A mold was made off of this, and then in order to create it into bronze, we had to create a wax and then clean it all up. Uh, when, cre uh, when the city uh, presented this, they, I actually made a small version of it, and the city sold the small versions to help fund the uh, creating the uh, the foundation for it, putting in the lighting, straightening up the whole park area and doing a lot of things, plus paying my commission out of it. So we actually made the small version that you see to the left-hand side of the clay model, but I also have over here a small version that I left in this condition so that people understand that even though this is a small version of it, we still have to make it into several different pieces, but we make it so that it all fits together and it has to be welded. When it's first taken out of the shell, which these are shell cast, uh, it is very rough and there's all kinds of spots where we would actually acted as heat vents and or sprues and gating to the piece to cast. But this has to fit up right to the back of Snoopy's head and then this is welded along here and put together. But the whole entire piece will be completely sanded. This is just the starting of the sanding, and I wanted to leave this at different stages to show people. And then after it's all perfected, we uh, patina it, wax it, and polish it. It goes through several different stages, actually, of acid baths and a lot of different things. I'm kind of leaving out some of the things, but it's kind of long and drawn out. But it's a lot of sanding and a lot of hand labor intensive work. Now, if anybody wanted to contact you to make a purchase, uh, are there any stores where you have your sculptures or do you have a website or anything? Uh, well, they can contact me direct if they want at Ski Studios. My name is Stan Palowski at 562-433-9999 or Ski Studios at earthlink.net. That, that's S-K-I-S-T-U-D-I-O-S at earthlink.net or like the Retired Bronze is sold out at uh, Knott's Berry Farm. It's sold at the Snoopy's Gift Gallery in Santa Rosa. Uh, the newest edition is only sold directly through me at this time because we're just trying to get enough out right now. But um, they're also sold, you can also go on to websites, the Peanuts Collector Club, and locate a lot of different things and stuff like that. Now, you, will you be creating more new characters in the future? Oh, yes, yes. I have plans that will probably keep me busy for the rest of my life, uh, different designs that I've wanted to do, things that I talked over with Sparky when he was alive. and different ideas. I'm glad that I worked out a lot of the details because he really gave me a lot of great guidance in how you would like to have the characters presented and done. So, so most of your life's work is going to be connected with Charles Schultz and uh, his characters? I, I can say that a big part of that would be yes because I've done a lot of Disney in the past. Uh, I enjoy working with the Schultz family. He took a very special interest in my work from the very beginning. Uh, we established just a fabulous rapport with each other. Another uh, man that took me to actually introduce me to him said I established a better relationship with him in 15 minutes more than he had in 20 some years of his association with Schulz. And Schulz uh, and I did a lot of very personal things together. I was with him when he got a star on the Walk of Fame. I walked the Dinah Shore with him when he would outplay. I w flew back to Minnesota for the 45th anniversary of. Uh, his strip back there, and I was able to tour the, his boyhood home where he grew up, and I took this wonderful picture that's in my office of him uh, drawing on the walls. The guy who had allowed us into the uh, place where he lived as a youngster asked him if he wouldn't mind dr uh, drawing since he allowed us in there, and then he tried to hand Sparky a, a ballpoint pen, and Sparky kind of looked at it and says, well, I couldn't draw with this. And I had a Sharpie in my camera case, and I looked at him and uh, I knew that he really wasn't a person that enjoyed being put on the spot too much or 
he didn't like to autograph a lot of things, but I thought this was really a special occasion, and this guy was very kind to us, let us into his home like this. And I said I had a Sharpie in my camera case, and after he started to draw, I proceeded to take pictures. And the moment that he was done, I asked him to look this way. I'm very good at cl doing close-up photography, but most of the time I don't shoot people very well. It's kind of hazy. And I prayed as I was actually snapping the shutter that this picture would come out, and it just came out wonderfully. He's just capping the... Uh, Sharpie back up and he's got a great smile and off to his left side is a picture of Snoopy with hearts around it. We'll show you that in a minute. How, how did you get started? Uh, is this a natural talent? Did you study? Did you go to school? Did you have uh, a mentor? I, well, I, I've had many mentors uh, into this, but I actually started off, I guess, considering being a natural talent. Uh, my mother said that I actually was sculpting at the age of six. I don't really recall, but I remember doing a lot of different things. And at nine, I can recall carving wood and soap and all kinds of different things. I know as a youngster, I really enjoyed making model cars and entering them into competitions. And I would very often take first place uh, with this uh, model building. And that's kind of what we do now. Even sculpting, uh, we call it doing sculpture. It's, it's still what we consider kind of making models from scratch in a way. But uh, with it back to the cars, I would sometimes drill the engine block and I would put threads running from the distributor to make it look like it's a real engine. And I would paint the firewalls and run the wires in different ways and paint the caps even on this little miniature battery that might only be a, a half inch you know, wide or something like that. And I do tuck and roll interiors and just went crazy on it. My dad didn't know what I was gonna be become uh, when I grew up, but I just <coughs> enjoyed doing stuff like that in crafts all my entire life. When you start a sculpture, how long does it take from start to finish? Uh, the sculpture itself will take uh, normally two or three hundred hours. And that's in the stages of producing the original model, what I call the original model or master model. That doesn't include making the molds off of it and pouring the wax to get the, it into this next stage of being in metal. I'm just talking about getting the original. Could we go in the back and sure. uh, you can show sure. us some stuff back oh, there? Oh, sure, sure. One more thing I did want to say was like just to get these five particular models done, it took a period of almost two years just now to get the very first ones off. That's why it's, and then it takes a lot of time into production because I'm so fussy about having the castings done. And the way they are heavy too. They are very, very heavy. A lot of them weigh 20 to 25 pounds, even though they are hollow. Oh wow! Here's, a, here, here, here's another uh, yeah, well, tremendous this, room. Well, this is the office. Uh, this here is the picture that I was just <coughs> speaking of. Oh, uh huh. And I took the sharpie, and I actually put a piece of tape on it, and I keep it as on my desk as a memento forever of uh, this particular occasion. How how did you meet him? I was doing a lot of work for Disney at the time, and a licensee of Charles Schulz's had heard of my work and had asked me if I'd be interested in going up and meeting him. Well, of course I would. Uh, most people don't realize that as a youngster, about the time after I quit building these model cars and my daughter was first born, I uh, would buy a bag of clay, and I'd go home on the weekends, and I would, on a Friday night, start sculpting. And I didn't have really any tools at that time, uh, nothing fancy. And I would very often, this was the type of clay that would dry. So I would have to put it inside my oven with a bowl of water and cover it up with <laughs> plastic so that I could get a few hours sleep and then get up a little bit later and keep working on it. And I'd work on it all week long, weekend long. And at that time, I was doing Snoopy sculptures. I enjoyed doing those because my daughter loved Snoopy. She was just a little baby, but she could recognize Snoopy. And... Uh, I just thought that it was just one of the most fantastic cartoon character ever created, and he was had so many different personas. So, and my cousin really loved Snoopy stuff, so I made a lot of clay sculptures and gave them to him. I wish we had some of those examples to this day. You know, I look around. You know, and <laughs> I wish we had a lot of time because every time I look, there's something else I want to. Uh, now, this is a, a rep, This is a, this uh, a second sculpture that yes. in Santa Rosa. Yes, I made a, the an example of it for bronze just to keep here in my office. Excuse all the boxes that are around it we're in shipping right now but yeah this is the exact same size as the one there except for the other one up there set up onto the base and has the railing around it and um, the, all the lighting added to it which makes a great deal of difference at nighttime in seeing the piece all of the pictures uh, of these I, I recognize a lot of famous people there I can yes uh, a lot of the 
these are people that have created a lot of the cartoon characters uh, and received the Sparky Award that I designed, or nicknamed the Sparky, the Charles M. Schulz Award. Over here we have Chuck Jones, who created Wile E. Coyote and, and the Roadrunner and worked on you know, the, all the Bugs Buddy films and very famous for all his Warner Brother characters uh, receiving the Sparky Award. Uh, over here we have John Lasseter, who's got the new movie The Incredibles out, who's done Toy Stories, Bugs Life, Pixar Pictures. Um, over here we have uh, Carl Barks, very famous for Scrooge McDuck, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. He did it, all the cartoon strips for many, many years. Is that the Hulk back there? Well, yeah, that's Lou Ferrigno years ago. <laughs> I uh, was out doing a show, and Lou Ferrigno was there. And I was a big fan of the Hulk when I was younger and he gave me an autographed picture. We were both doing an autograph session out here. Just like I have a picture over there, of Lois Lane, Noel Nil with Superman. I was a big Superman fan when I was younger. I Le Leonard Malton from Entertainment Tonight, who's a good friend of mine, interviewed me years ago and we became very, very close friends. Is that President Clinton I see back there in the corner? Mr. Clinton, yes. He, uh, I never spoke with him, but I, I understand he read some article on me years ago, and he sent this picture and said something. I guess it was right after we did the large sculpture for the city of Santa Rosa. Uh, over here we have Sergio Ogonis, who is famous for Alfred E. Newman and Mad Magazine. Back here we have Dale Messick, who did Brenda Starr. She was ver the very first nationally syndicated woman. And there's countless other ones like Bill Melendez, who animates all the Snoopy stuff for TV, famous for the Christmas uh, animation show special every single year, uh, The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Um, he's received one, and many others. Uh, Stan Lee, who's done Spider-Man. I just don't have a lot of pictures of these guys because I didn't attend the last couple of ceremonies. Now, the wall of pictures here, are these original works of art? These are original works of art from uh, Snow White. A lot of these are what you'd consider concept drawings, uh, so that they were not actually used in the production. Sometimes they're considered atmospheric drawings. So these would be small sketches passed around uh, to other artists, kind of creating an atmosphere for the movie. Now, how, how, how have you been able to complete your collection or work on your complexion? Uh, collection. <laughs> collection? Uh, My complexion. No. <laughs> is it, do you buy these? Uh, well, I've been very fortunate. I've bought a lot of this stuff at auction through the years. I also actually knew a lot of the early artists at an early stage before it was really fashionable to collect this sort of stuff. So I kind of been collecting this for 30, over 35 years. So it's a lot more fashionable nowadays to collect this, but I always had such a great love for it, and I would refer to looking at these model sheets and drawings and sculpting things, or giving me different ideas to do different things. So I actually use them as a tool in creating, so. Now I understand Sparky used to send you, uh, instead of Christmas cards and birthday wishes, that he would send you an original drawing? Yes, for many years I've gotten original strip on my birthday above the door over there. There is one that was actually given to me on my birthday, which is September 29th, and it's made out to me and says, birthday wishes, I believe, Sparky. And I really love it. And the reason I hang it above the door is because I'm able to see it more. Every time I pass through that door, I always look up. So my favorite piece of artwork normally I hang above a door. Beats a hallmark, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> by far, by far. So <laughs> you, just, you just have little collections everywhere. Yep, there's uh, small little things that I've made also in this area over here. There's a you sculpt those little teeny year, things? Yeah, years ago I was, when I, I could really see, here is a Snoopy that I did, and it's a half inch tall. It's probably the smallest thing I've ever actually sculpted, but he's holding a bouquet of flowers, and you can actually count the petals on the flower. How can you do something so small? Well, um, I don't know exactly how I do it. I just have a real, I guess, strong uh, hands and nerves because I don't shake at all, um, fortunately. But my eyes are really going. Uh, I was really well known for doing small things like this. I, but that's the smallest piece I ever did. I, was, I would carve three quarter inch pieces. When I was designing jewelry, a lot of times I would make pieces that would actually be movable parts. So you'd have to make these so intricately done mm -hmm. that to revolve or, or put a screw in somewhere so that it would pivot. So uh, back then I could do it 
without glasses nowadays, I almost need a microscope to do that sort of stuff. It's not that I still can't do it, but uh, most people used to kid me and say, well, don't you make it a larger size and you have a machine that reduces that down for you? I said, no, that's actually how small I would carve was a half inch. So I don't have no magical machine that carves it for me small. Is that the witch from the uh, that's Snow White? That's Maleficent actually from Sleeping Beauty and that was created by Mark Davis. And that's an original 70 millimeter cell up there. Uh, is that Chip and Dale? And that's Chip and Dale. Yep, signed by Bill Justice, the guy who animated a lot of the. And lot I of see that. Mickey and says thanks, Dan. Mickey in the game. Yep. Well, inside of here, I was telling you, I had a lot of pictures of a lot of other artists, unfortunately, that I don't have. But here is Ward Kimball, the guy who created Jiminy Cricket. And that's actually a picture of him sitting on my barber shop here. He's also the guy who created Ponchito. Milt Nill, who created Howdy Doody, had visited the store. This is actually my favorite picture of Bill Melendez because I love the reflection. He's pretending like he's cracking my safe out in front. <laughs> uh, and I was really good friends with uh, Clarence Ducky Nash. This was his wife, uh, Margaret, and this was up at her home. I still see their family quite often. And uh, Peggy, the daughter, and Kay. And it was just up to Donald Duck's star on the Walk of Fame uh, last about a month or so ago. Uh, in front of the El Capitan Theater and got to see them. Okay, what's next on your uh, on your accomplishments? Well, right now I have a huge long list of Snoopy things that I would like to do. I'd actually like to do some larger pieces again. Uh, I told people as I get older, I enjoy doing the larger pieces. I always planned on doing larger pieces as I got older because I knew that eventually age would take its toll on my eyesight. So as long as I could when I was younger, I produced little small pieces. Now that I'm getting a little bit older, I would like to do a few other larger pieces, more um, like the 18 to 24 inch size pieces that would be limited editions of maybe even 50. We have two minutes left. If you've got anything that you want to especially show us or tell us or... Well, I, d I just have this laying here. Uh, last year I completed uh, Charles Schulz's grave site for the family and it's up in outside of Santa Rosa in Pleasant Hills and it was a several thousand pound granite bench with these characters on it etched just as the way this is a test sample and then I used his final words in his strip to the public which were Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Linus and Lucy, how will I ever forget them and um, I just think that, you know, from all the people that have wrote me about that, that I just show you th that little piece there that I keep as a memento, remind me of him. So this is a bench up there? Th this is part of a, 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 a bench. This is the actual uh, artwork that was placed upon the bench. And also over here, what I do is, Charles Schulz wrote me a lot of letters through the year and really commented on, on how much he liked my artwork and I keep those letters there sealed in a Ziploc bag now to keep uh, any moisture or fingerprints from getting on it but we have a couple of them framed in the section over there. That Stan the half hour has flown by and right. I know we can <laughs> talk for a lot longer and see a lot more but thanks, well, thanks so, so much, much for Arnie. letting me come and oh, visit you because welcome. I've been wanting to do this ever since I read an article in the press telegram about you. <laughs> Thank you. And that's our show and thanks for watching and Come back and join us again next month as we take another walk through history and uncover more Long Beach treasures.